In the last episode we tore down a car alternator, repaired its rectifier bridge and checked all the other key parts for basic failures. Now that we have put everything back together, we are going to see how this thing really works. And this is our setup. We have a 12-volt car battery connected to the alternator. Oscilloscope probes are connected to the appropriate phase terminals and to simulate the ignition switch I am using this alligator clip. To move the pulley I will use this socket with an adapter powered by this crusty hand drill and turn it on like that. Each trace here represents each phase. The oscilloscope is connected like that. Here begins my favorite part in any project, the measurements. So without further ado, gentlemen, start your engines. <laughs> Interesting. You see that for 2 or 3 seconds the peak-to-peak -peak voltage remains at around 12 volts and the frequency is around 200 hertz until they go up to 30 volts and drop to 111 hertz respectively. This trapezoidal waveform is quite a bit unexpected. I expected a clean sinusoid. 30 volts peak-to-peak -peak give or take is fairly consistent with the rated DC voltage output. After rectification we will have a peak voltage of 15 volts. Minus the diode voltage drops, this will give us around 14 volts. Now we are measuring the voltage as the brush that is connected to the voltage regulator chip. We can see that it begins with a little more than 12 volts, which is the voltage provided by the battery. The ignition switch is off. As soon as we turn it on, bang! We have a PWM signal with a frequency of about 390 Hz. So it is not DC as I presumed in the last video, after all. We can notice we have little peaks here, this is certainly caused by the rotor coil inductance. Let's now again simulate the engine start. After 2 or 3 seconds we have apparently a 50% duty cycle. The amplitude is higher because it is now the alternator that is providing power at its nominal 14 volts, and the battery is now being charged. From time to time we have something of a longer pulse which means that for some reason we are having a low frequency oscillation in the control loop. This might indicate a fluctuation on the output voltage. We will have to see if this is the case. Also, I noticed that if the ignition switch keeps turned on after the engine stops, the voltage as the brush does not return to a high level, but stays in a low level consuming a lot of current. If we divide the 12 volts by 2.6 ohms, the rotor coil DC resistance, this will give us more than 4 amps. Holy moly! And it does not modulate if we start the engine again. We need to turn off the ignition switch and turn it on again to make it exhibit the expected behavior. Since these alternators are not connected directly to an ignition switch but to an ECU, electronic control unit, or ECM, engine control module, or whatever, I guess that the plus B voltage is cut off as soon as the ECU detects that the engine has died. Now on the yellow trace we have the alternator output voltage and the blue trace is one of the phases. As we turn the ignition switch on we start to see some spikes on the output probably due to the switching at the rotor coil. Let's start our simulated engine and we can consistently observe the soft start again. There is a very noisy output with all those spikes. The DC output is at the rated 14 volts. I suspect that this is due to the rotor coil switching. Now the blue trace is the voltage at the switching brush and bingo. We can see that the spikes coincide pretty much with the edges of the switching wave form at the rotor coil. Although the ripple due to the rectification is in the range of less than 10%, these spikes are really insane. We have a very poor filtering here. Or perhaps that is supposed to be that way. A thorough investigation on the subject would be the theme for a whole new episode. And now we have the multimeter on the left measuring the output voltage at the alternator and the multimeter on the right measuring the current in series with the battery. We can see that when we turn the ignition switch on the alternator consumes around 158 milliamperes. That is indicated by the minus sign. 
As soon as the rotor starts to move, the ignition light is turned off and the current drops down to 59 milliamperes. A couple more seconds and the alternator starts to convert the mechanical power into electrical power and you can see the voltage going up to around 14 volts and the current now inverts its direction, confirming that the battery is being charged. If the engine dies, the ignition light is turned on, but as we predicted the current consumption goes up insanely to 3.6 amps. When you turn plus B off, this alternator quietly consumes 242 microamperes. Well that about does it for now. With this we unveiled a little bit of the secret life of the humble but always essential car alternator. Thanks for watching. Have a good night and stay beautiful.